Uh, my name is Bhargav Bikkaji and I work for the OS 10 engineering group here. So I'm going to talk about a case fair, uh, the way we integrated OS 10 with Kubernetes for one of our customer, uh, for one of our customer. So before getting on to the use case and the solution that we did, I, I would like to talk uh, about how IP address allocation happens. Now we all know how it happens in a, a traditional case. There's a DHCP server, you get a request, and then it assigns an IP address. It assigns an IP address based on the location of the host. So I would call this uh, DHCP server as network aware. Now I, I'll, I'll go ahead and call it physical network aware. Then we had this virtu uh, virtual networks coming into the picture. Then we kind of uh, separated uh, the physical networks and the virtual networks. And what we did was we said any changes on the physical network should not affect the virtual and vice versa. So that, that was the uh, thought process. And uh, all the DHCP was happening from the virtual world. So any VM that is coming up on the virtual world will have an uh, uh, IP address assigned on the virtual subnet. Now these virtual subnets uh, has no, I mean, do, does not have an understanding of what physical is, and also physical does not, in, in, in turn, does not understand what, what what the virtual IP is. So this is the model that we went on, and if, then there is some requirement from the, from the underlay. For example, if you build an L3 network you should have a network virtualization uh, because uh, that's how you, you, you forward the packet. So you have a network virtualization uh, like VXLAN or NVGRE, you forward the packet, it takes to the destination host and then rip off the uh, end cap and forward the packet. If you did not have a network virtualization, what you have to do is you have to have a L2 fabric. That, that's the mo most of the requirement, most of the cases where you build a L2 fabric uh, and you, if you don't want a network virtualization in case of say for example, for one of our, I mean, for example you don't, uh, uh, some, some customers felt that they didn't want uh, network virtualization because of the performance issues. So uh, you need to build an L2 fabric. Now what happens is that when you build an L2 fabric, all the virtual uh, forwarding, uh, forwarding entity is exposed to the physical. For example, the MAC address. The MAC address, the forward, forwarding is based on MAC address. All these are exposed to the physical. Now, we, we, let's get into Docker world, you know, container Docker world. The addressing scheme is slightly, you know, uh, slightly different in the sense that there is two level of addressing happens here. Now, once you install a Docker uh, on a host, there is, a, uh, there is a Docker bridge created. Now you have to assign a Docker subnet, on, uh, you have to install, a, I mean you have to assign a Docker subnet there. From the Docker subnet, uh, all the IP addresses are provided to the container. So there's two level of, uh, 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 two level of uh, assignment there. Now what people did was, there are a few networking solutions, I mean network plugins that said I will take the physical route where I will not have network virtualization and install whatever the physical can understand. And uh, there are a few solutions where they said, no, I will take a tr uh, uh, I'll take more like an open stack approach. I will assign a, a virtual IP address, which is independent of the physical. So I thought that's a good segue into what the problem we had with the customer. The, what our customer wanted was, he, he, he had to pick a Kubernetes distribution, which is tectonic, and he, uh, which, which only supports a flannel network plugin. Now this flannel network plugin has a, a virtual subnet which is independent of physical. So it, it keeps assigning a subnet which, uh, which, which is independent, which, which has no relationship with the underlay. And then he didn't want NVO because he didn't want, uh, I mean, he had some performance issues, so he had to go with NVO. Now uh, flannel supports that. It, it says that you, you, sh uh, you can, if you configure flannel in a host gateway mode, it removes the NVO. Number one, also you should have an L2 network on underlay. You should build an L2 underlay. Uh, that's when we got, in, uh, we got uh, en engaged with the customer. And the third requirement was he needed L3 network. He didn't want an L2, which the host gateway mode was proposing. So when, the, when, we, had, when we were having the discussions, a couple of things that came up. Number one is uh, custom, this customer used to build an L2 network uh, sometime two years back. Now he moved on to L3, like, L2, L3, I mean, uh, Tor, uh, having BGP's leaf and spine that you see on, on, the, on the picture here. Uh, then, so he, he, was, he moved on to L3, didn't, did not want to go back to L2. During our discussion, something came up. There was a potential issue with the resource that we, we started seeing. For example, uh, the MAC address table of, is, is of specific size. Now, if you look into a VM-based uh, deployment, 
a thousand node cluster having 50 VMs will probably take about uh, 50k MAC address from the from the underlay. But when you get into a container deployment, a thousand node having you pack more containers. So this customer packed about five or six times more uh, containers than VMs. So about 300 MAC addresses were you know from a single host. So a thousand node cluster was taking 300k max. So that's the, that's where the resource problem was. So now there was the potential resource is issue or the scale issue, and of course there is a uh, you didn't want NVO because of the performance. So uh, then we said, okay, you go ahead and build your network with uh, with uh, with non NVO. You, I mean, I, I, we understand you have to work with the Flannel plugin, and we will. You continue to build L3. We'll find a solution where we will make sure the routing works properly. That that's where, that's where. Okay, I think the picture is missing here. That's where uh, we said we'll write a solution uh, where uh, uh, we said that we will write a piece of software on the Tor box, which would listen, uh, uh, which will uh, write a piece of software in the Tor box, where we have a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I didn't have a, uh, suppose the picture is missing here. I'm just explaining the picture here. Uh, the picture is like, uh, that's a three node Kubernetes cluster uh, and that is a tor and leaf uh, sitting there. So what we did was uh, we wrote a software which would I mean, uh, which would listen to the HCD HCD of the Kubernetes cluster. Now this HCD has all the information of the Kubernetes, including the network uh, plugin or rather network uh, parameters. Now Flannel, when it allocates a subnet to each of the host, it goes and writes into the HCD saying that this subnet is located on this host. This container subnet is located on this host. Now when, when such a, when, when, when such a, uh, when we go and read from that sub, I mean we go and read that HCD and we pick up those routes, uh, we, uh, once we pick up those routes, we do a couple of things. The first, it checks whether the, uh, the host is on the connected network or directly connected, is it directly connected to the Tor? If it is, and we go and install the route using the CPS API. Now what CPS API does to us is, it does two things. Number one, it hardware accelerate, uh, I mean, it goes and writes into the TCAM so that hardware acceleration takes place. Also, it writes uh, the route into the kernel. Now by writing the route into the kernel, what happens is that it gives me an ability to use BGP to you know, redistribute those kernel routes onto the fun spine. That's where our whole reachability is uh, taken care. So, uh, end of the day, what happens is that cu customer was happy with this performance, and we were able to, you know, uh, solve a potential scale issue uh, with this kind of deployment. And if you look at the scale also, what we do is, uh, so since the Docker has a subnet for each bridge, we, we uh, for a he given host, we uh, we advertise only 10, 000, whatever the size of the uh, cluster, which is like 1,000 today, you can probably go to 10,000 tomorrow. So 10K, we, so that we kind of handle the scale in that way, yeah. Uh, could you just <clears throat> clear, so it sounds like you're, you're reading the flannel information out of etcd yep. and yep. then you're just right. programming that into the tor switch for audibility? that is correct yep. that's and, and forward it so i mean and of is a reachability problem yeah and reachability problem is because of the constraints we put on it right. we, i mean they don't want to use nvo first constraint second constraint don't want to run bgp or some kind of routing protocol on the end host then how do you solve a problem i mean you need to somehow read the etc the, the mapping from the etcd database yeah. then program the tor switch and then CPS kicks in. I mean, CPS allows us to sort of listen to that mapping, uh, register with Kubernetes, etcd, listen to the mapping, then program the Tor switch, which you can't do unless you have sort of a programmable interface that the, the base OS 10 provides. And, and again, sort of, it writes it onto the kernel that helps us to forward it to the leaf and spine, you know, yeah, redistribute exactly. it. And you can redistribute it to the leaf and spine, yes. correct? So the reachability is established. I mean, that's sort of the uh, the, the premise of this, uh, this demo. Do you have something to... Uh, yeah, I have the demo. So if you see, uh, these are the three nodes here. This is a master node. Uh, this is a node one, and this is node two. And what we have is a tor and spine, or tor leaf and spine. What? So now, the, the, if you look at it, this is the spine layer. Now I can ping all the tor nodes here. The tor node IP address is uh, ping 2.0, etc. So this is a master server here. Now I'm just, uh, you know, uh, Printing the route table here, so that to let you know that we don't have any uh, flannel subnets exposed right now. Uh, so the Kubernetes cluster is uh, running. There is a uh, uh, there is a pod running here. The pod is uh, 
uh, there's an nginx pod running, which is running on the host, uh, uh, the node two here. So I'm just calling out the uh, so this is a simple script. You know, uh, so uh, so when, when we got into uh, when we got into discussion with the customer, uh, you wanted some solution quickly so that we could you know you could get out of this problem and focus more on the application uh, aspects of it, uh, application aspects of Kubernetes. So uh, uh, it is a simple uh, Python script that listens to the HCD and does uh, I mean. Uh, listens to HCD to pull up the host and the container subnet, installs it in the uh, kernel as well as uh, uh, the TCAP. So if you if you see in the spine layer, we have uh, uh, all the subnets now, uh, all the subnets, uh, uh, all the virtual subnets there. Then uh, the nginx IP address is uh, uh, 172.16.48.2. I'm just pinging from the spine. That. So, um, established it, yeah. what he's trying to show through the CPS API. The, that Python script, is that running as a sort of background process on all of the switches, or at least the tours? Yes. On the tours. On the just tours. The, just the tours. Just the tours. Just the okay. tours, correct. All right. And, uh, and then how, how, how uh, can you restate how it detects if it's locally connected, since it's not, so, uh, the so tour isn't the gateway, correct? The tour isn't. Uh, because that, because the, the overlay is, is being terminated at the virtual layer. No, so there's no overlay here. There's no overlay here. That, there's no overlay yet. Flannel is not. No, flannel supports overlay. both overlay and non-overlay. That is a host gateway mode in flannel that you can use to disable the overlay. Oh, okay, yes, so yes. They have disabled overlay here. Right, right, they right. They have disabled right. overlay. Okay, cool. Okay. So, so then how do you how do you detect that it's locally connected? Is that just so basically uh, uh, the star listens to the HCD, yeah. gets the host information, yeah, and it checks whether it's on the connected interface. Okay. If it is not in the connected interface, we just don't do anything. And then we also check if the ARP is available. If there is no ARP, we, we do an explicit ARP to check if the ARP is there. Okay. I mean, we get the ARP and then do the next next. That, that answers it. Thank you.